Hello, Rail Writers. Chris here. Welcome to your weekly Sunday journal with me session. I noticed that last weekend we crossed the four month mark, which is kind of amazing to me that I've been doing these every week for four months. It's not something you think you'll have time for or a promise you'll be able to keep necessarily, and then you do, and it feels good to keep a promise to yourself um, with this time. At least it does for me, so I hope it does for you as well. And if you're new, welcome. We've built up quite a library of these, so feel free to go back through the last 16 videos and choose the ones that called to you and do some journaling. They're at the most 30 to 35 minutes total with some shorter ones. I'm trying to get better at making them a bit shorter. And uh, for those of you who have been um, with me since the beginning or found me somewhere along the way, thanks for coming back and spending this time with me. I would love to hear more about what you're journaling about in the comments, whatever you feel comfortable talking about or ask me questions, whatever. Uh, you don't have to be a writer to be doing these videos with me, but if you are, I am a publisher of a small press. I'm the editor-in-chief of a small press and I am a developmental editor for fiction and nonfiction and I also edit and coach poets, people creating MFA portfolios for their applications, um, helping people with grants for writing. Um, there are grants for writers out there and I'll do a video on that at some point to help people out and get that information. But um, yeah, so if you have a question about writing or publishing or editing or something, throw it down in the comments and I'm happy to answer it. I've been doing editing work now for more than 30 years. So I don't know about you and I didn't look at any of the astrology this week. I just um, didn't have time because it was a big week for me. I sold my house finally, which was a surreal experience because it was this was the third buyer we'd had had to sell my house short sale because it's just not worth anything i think it's worth maybe one third what i paid for it and that's the case for the entire neighborhood and things in my area just really went downhill so it was important that i move um, for many reasons drugs prostitution other things and just not the right place for me anymore. I'd been there too long. And, uh, well, that sounds like you just do short sale when you've lived in a house for too long. It, that's not the case. I hope you I hope that makes sense. But it was, uh, I'd been there for a very long time and the stress of it was more than I can take any, uh, any longer. And I also left my job on Friday, uh, which was also surreal. <laughs> so, Lots of change in my life this week and endings and hopefully new beginnings. So that's what I'm focusing on right now is the idea of the new beginnings to come and just sort of also taking stock and processing the experience of the last year because that's important to do so you don't drag it along behind you. So an interesting balance of surreal and hopeful <laughs> this week. How about you? Share what in the comments how your week's been going and I hope that if it's been a tricky week that this provides a bright spot. So this is a new deck. What a shock. Oh my gosh I say that every time because I keep buying new decks. This is uh, I've used I, I don't think I've used an, a Lenormand deck yet. Um, there are several kinds of decks out there and one of them, I've used the Mystical Kipper deck, which is tiny and very whimsical and fun, good for creating stories with. So you might want to go back and look for that one. But there's also the Lenormand deck, which is also another divination deck. It, it came with um, little rhyming poems on them and they are very symbolic, usually having one, one idea like dog, letter, a horse. I don't think there's a horse. Um, 
let me try to remember some of them, anchor, black cat, you know, symbolic things like that. And so this is an interesting take on that. Instead of the Lenormand, which is L-E-N-O-R-M-A-N-D, this is the Lunar Nomad Oracle. Lenormand, Lunar Nomad, get it? So it's really cool. It's a bit dark. This is the kind of coloring it's, that's in most of the cards, but um, I was, I don't know, I was drawn to this card. I've seen it many times, but I wasn't interested, and then suddenly I was. So what you're seeing here is a moon peeking through a keyhole uh, on the back of the cards, navy blue, so like a night sky kind of thing. And these cards are quite large and a bit flimsy. I wish they were smaller and a better card stock. Um, but I'm still compelled by the images, and I hope you will be too. So because they're new, whenever I have these new decks, I want to share as many cards as possible, so I'm going to work with three cards. I would like to get back to journaling with one card. It's a little simpler, and it will take less time for us to jump into this. I'd like to have some shorter videos, so in case you all are doing this on a break or a lunch hour or something, and you want to have just a quick writing session, I want that to be available, so perhaps I should just move forward then. Okay, let's look at the first card over here, and they do fall down quite a bit. It was hard to get them up because they're so large. So this is Rider. It's number one. There's a lot of layering to the imagery on these cards. There's a camel, there's a bridge, and a woman in the background. Very mysterious. I'm trying to see what else is in here. There are cacti down here, lots of cacti. It's an interesting, there's lots of layering of the imagery, like I said, in these cards. So this is the first card in the deck. I wonder if it will stay up. Ha ha, it will. So let's, let's look up the rider card. There are, these are very long, these descriptions, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. So this card means messages, news, information, receiving something, receiving something incoming, an opportunity. The writer evokes feelings of wanderlust and exploration. She is a colorful and curious spirit in the pursuit of fulfillment. She lives on the edge of the ephemeral and embodies the energy of motion and expansion. Her ghostly figure is seen in the card's background, an ever-present spirit drawn into the wild unknown of the worlds within and without. It can be said that the writer is on the edge of dreaming and waking reality, simultaneously dreaming and experiencing the dream. For some, she will evoke a time of new beginnings and deep exploration of creative desires and musings. Her nomadic spirit is always in the process, carrying something into life from the liquid substance of the creative unknown into the tangible form of reality. By exploring the unknown, you are met with possibilities along the way. You are reminded that endurance can be provided by outside connections and confirmation, but never neglect the rich inner world for it always provides messages, insights, and nourishment to carry you through the most uncertain times. If you engage with the nomadic spirit of the rider, you will discover the truth that experience is about perspective. Each moment you traverse in the world of the unknown, you could judge the journey as being lost or being in discovery. Discovery holds the promise of untold treasures and the arrival at a destination. A nomad is always aware that when one journey ends, a new adventure begins. Oh, how funny. Hmm, I guess I'll be writing on this card unless the others have more of a connection to what I experienced this week. Uh, whatever message the writer has traveled to give you, be ready for change and hold on to the promise that your perspective will shift. Your mind will crack open and your creative adventure will begin. You might find yourself in the process of discovering something, a project, a message, a service. The writer is all about discovering and carrying forward information and insight. The piece to the puzzle you've been in search of might appear. 
you could be led down a completely uncharted path where even more profound experiences unfold. That is the swift and evolving nature of the rider. Bewilderment can ensue. If you are confused, acknowledge you're not knowing. Lean into uncertainty. You will find an oasis in the arid desert, or you could find the entrance across the bridge to liberation. Ask yourself, what am I delivering in my life right now? So that might be a good question for journaling. What am I delivering in my life right now? Delivery is everything when trying to cultivate understanding and connection. Affirmations are powerful intentions that deliver messages to your higher self, the world, and the universe. The writer reminds you to acknowledge and explore all the nuances in your, on your inward journey out. Evaluate how your affirmations are shaping your current experience. Okay, so that was a very compelling card. We're off to a good start. So let's see what card number two. It seems pretty clear. So you could, um, you could journal on this question. I'll just read it again. What am I delivering in my life right now? Or, you know, what are you discovering in your life right now? I mean, for me right now, the word delivering isn't really, doesn't really resonate. But, and if that's the case with you, what if you change the question to, what am I discovering in my life right now? Are you also in a transition phase and dealing with, you know, what you don't know? You don't know what's next or you know what your next step is, but you don't know what it's going to be like or what the end result will be or who you're going to meet or what you're going to have to do or if you're up to the task or if you're even up to the next phase of the journey. And the, I just hate using the word journey. It's so precious and everybody uses it. But it's, it's apropos. I mean, it's appropriate. Um, so, you know, what creative adventure is coming? What creative adventure would you like to begin? You might consider some of these questions and lean into uncertainty. That's a really resonant phrase for me right now. So maybe it is for you too. So let's look at card number two. Try not to knock these over. Oh, the moon. How appropriate. This is the lunar nomad, and here's the moon. Come to visit us. So here is a pagoda or a gazebo, but it's, I'm just going to say it's either, it looks Japanese to me, but I'm not like a shrine. But if I'm wrong, apologies. And toadstools slash mushrooms, again, not, not an expert on either one, so could be getting those wrong. And here's the moon, and then you'll see there's another side view in the face of the moon. So this is number three, and down they go. This is the one I kept having trouble with. And we'll go to number, th oh, it's 32. Why did I read it as three? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I should look at number three for myself. Moon. Emotion, feeling, intuition, lunar cycle, art, hidden talents, imagination, and winter. The moon represents the lunar self, which is the right-brained intuitive mind that uses creative imagination, symbolic language, and sensitivity to move through the world. The lunar self speaks in symbols, pictures, metaphors, and feelings, and offers a pathway into creative experiences. Art, language, magic, and storytelling fall into the realm of the lunar self and the moon's influence. The moon awakens a sense of wonder and discovery for the world as it unfolds and reminds you that power comes from within. The Lunar Nomad Oracle is an exploration of the lunar self in order to integrate the qualities of the moon and her influence into your daily life. When you wake up to your personal creative power and realize your magic comes from within, you begin to life, live life more fully, fluidly, and completely. 
As you begin to heal the deep burning wounds of living in the light of the sun for far too long and find your sense of comfort in the moonlight, you find ways to integrate the two qualities together. We call this whole brain thinking. The moon offers a passage into your unconscious mind where your wisdom, potential, and power re reside. You begin trusting your intuitive impressions, creative musings, dreams, and imagination. Those creative stirrings will become no more than shadows if they are not brought into the light of day. The moon inspires introspection and deep exploration of the inner world. She teaches you the power of your personal tides, when to rest and when to move, when to let go and when to grow. The moon teaches you the wisdom of your body as an instrument of your spirit, if you are female and experiencing a menstrual cycle. Unlike the sun that beams brightly upon everything below, the moon awakens an inner stirring with her innate magnetism. She stirs the tides, nature, and our own bodies. The moon urges you to go deeper into your emotions, explore your intuitive feelings, and play with creative ideas. You are still in a state of discovery as you explore the abstract light of the moon. Keep yourself from analyzing and keep exploring. Spent time being creative, tapping into your intuition through meditation, oracle cards, and spiritual work can inspire your creativity. Something deep within you is awakening. Make space for that beautiful moonbeam to glow and gain light. Look to the cycles of the moon for guidance. When she is new, you're in the beginning stages. When she is full, you are ripe with energy. And when she goes dark, it is time to rest. All absent creative and emotionally driven work falls within the moon's realm. The moon cultivates sensitivity and keen perception so you can move through experience with ease. So for this card, so two things are coming up. So the first can be that you might explore your shadow self and this doesn't have to be something negative, but there's, um, you know how in winter there's hibernation well, in summer, hibernation is called estivation, E-S-T-I-V-A-T-I-O-N, estivation, when you sort of hibernate inside in the summer because of the heat and the light. I personally am not a fan of summer. It's too bright. It's too sunny. It's too hot. It's just too much for me altogether. Too, too, too. T-O-O, -O, too much. I can deal with it only so long if there's mul if there are multiple sunny days back to back and never a thunderstorm or a cloudy day or anything it's just extremely wearing to me i lived in california for seven and a half years total and the endless sun almost drove me insane um so perhaps you might consider this this lunar side the moonlight the darkness the shadow and see what comes up for you um and where is that comment about, well, there's introspection here and deep exploration, exploring and going deeper into your emotions through creative acts and journaling can be a creative acts. Journal, wait, not even journaling is a creative act. <laughs> I'm putting weird plurals there. Uh, the word awakening was here, and now, of course, I can't find it. Um, it was in here somewhere, but the one phrase I can find is, the moon awakens a sense of wonder and discovery for the world as it unfolds and reminds you the power comes from within. So maybe you might ask yourself, what is awakening for me now? Within you and for you, what is, or what are you waking up to in terms of your own personal or creative power um, or magic how might you dive into that I cannot find this oh here it is something deep within you is awakening and you want to make space for that beautiful moonbeam to glow and gain light so what might be awakening or what do you hope is awakening sometimes it's more interesting to see what is happening that you didn't plan for, that you, it's a surprise and it's just sort of happening without you doing anything. So you might take a look at that. What's happening in your life right now that you didn't ask for? And it's not, you know, it could be good, it could be bad, or it could be neutral, but what is happening that you weren't seeking, but it's happening anyway? It's interesting to explore that and find out if you can 
not control that, but understand why it's happening so that you can do more uh, to shape, to shape your own life and what's happening. So that's card number two. Let's go to card number three. This is ship. Ah, here we go. Here's card number three. Maybe I was, maybe I was psychic and I knew card number three was coming. So here's card number three, hot air balloon. Okay, it's gonna stay up. Success. Let's go back to three. Oh my goodness, the ship is a long one. I'll try to summarize it. Several pages, I don't wanna go on and on. Ship is travel, long distance, trade, long-term commitment, and commerce. The whole wide world is out there waiting to be explored. So it, these all these cards for us today have been about discovery, awakening, exploration, power. Um, so expanding beyond boundaries, basically. The boundaries of your life, the boundaries of the self, the boundaries of the mind, the boundaries of the emotions. Um, so maybe you might want to consider each of these cards in, in turn in light of that theme. Action precedes adventure. Throw yourself into the experience with confidence and wide-eyed enthusiasm. Armchair explorers only live vicariously through the experience of the true adventurers, whether due to fear or lack of opportunity. The ship sails without you if you are unwilling to jump onto the ride. Before you is a fantastical contraption born from the mind and heart of a brave explorer. Recall the rider bridging dreams with reality. So here we have this card hearkening back to this, uh, the rider card number one on the far left. This beautiful enigmatic machine is a ship created to explore the sky and the vast mysteries of the planet. The bold inventor has become the brave adventurer. So here we are. We started out with this idea of the rider and adventure. And now in this card, we're, ta we're actually taking off on an adventure. With awe and a bit of caution, you climb into the vessel. You board with a brave heart and faithful companions ready to expand their horizons. Your heart flutters. You are filled with butterflies as a great roar rings out and you begin to lift into the sky. The ground below becomes smaller and smaller, but the possibilities grow as you climb. Puffy clouds float all around you, creating tunnels and paths that beg to be explored. The air up here, up here feels fresh, heady. You have never felt this vital and clear before. You are completely shaken by the wide open sky and the bigness of the world below. No longer are you daydreaming of great adventure. You are in the midst of one. Dreams are now reality. The ship will take you far and wide to the edge of your comfort zone and far from your comfy armchair. You are living this wild, fantastic ride. Let's see. All voyages have a start and a finish. You'll return from your adventure richer than before, pockets full of gold, bellies filled with delicious food, suitcases bursting with souvenirs, and your mind brimming with inspiring customs to adopt into your life. Ask yourself, what adventure am I waiting for? What adventure am I waiting for? Each one of us has an internal compass, a beautiful gilded instrument that knows the four directions, the way to true north and the path to exquisite possibility. Your inner dial is turning, pointing you forward. Will you follow the direction? Remember, you can dream the most vivid stories, touch the most faraway lands with your mind, but nothing replaces the enchantment of writhing through crowded streets in a place you've never been before. Wouldn't you like to know firsthand the things you've always imagined? Is there a place that you've always been drawn to, a place that lives behind your eyes each time they close, a beautiful landscape that you keep telling yourself has to be seen to be believed? Then go. The adventure can only begin with you. Listen to your heart and claim it. So this can be obviously an actual adventure. Is there somewhere you would like to go that you've always wanted to, but have felt held back? You know, imagine you can go, what would that be like? Go there now in your journaling. Don't be, get hung up on the, 
how would you make it happen? How would you pay for it? Visas, money, clothes, whatever you're worried about. Where would you stay? Language, how would you, you know, navigate customs and things like that? Don't worry about that. Just go into it as if anything is possible. Or you can have a more abstract adventure, a more metaphysical adventure, an emotional one, um, an adventure of the mind, the adventure, the next adventure in your life. You could, you could journal on that instead. So the last question in this is, what are you waiting for? So perhaps that's a question to answer to. What am I waiting for? I think that means it's time to journal. We'll be journaling for 10 minutes. Choose the card that speaks to you from left to right, the rider, the moon, or the ship. Or as we just, I just mentioned, this, this series seems to be about breaking boundaries, moving beyond limitations of any kind, and, ex and embracing adventure, whatever that means to you. So you could write on that theme in the context of all of these cards. You could make up a story as if you're entering the scenes of one of these cards and make up a story about the adventure of entering this card and what, what lies there for you. But, and you can also journal on nothing that, nothing that's in these cards at all, but something that tangential that comes up for you, that has come up for you in, in looking at the cards and listening to what they mean. So let's journal.
that's 10 minutes. Feel free to keep journaling if you'd like. Just pause the video and keep going. Would love to hear what these cards brought up for you. They're so sort of mystical um, and they just create this there's such a feeling of lifting up here and drifting away not just because of the balloon but because of the moon and the bridge you know crossing over passage and the bridges in the clouds and there's just this sense of <laughs> you know that phrase um, tugging at the bonds of earth so to speak um, that comes up there's a difference between being grounded and being chained to the ground because perhaps you won't let yourself lift up. You won't let yourself fly away or float off for a bit and get an aerial perspective, a different view of the situation. Or it's, it can be, it can feel very uncomfortable and scary to be untethered or unmoored and just sort of drift or float away without having anything to hold on to but you have yourself and as long as you have yourself you're you are safe and you can float or land anytime you want and you'll always be safe and if you look at it through the eyes of adventure and discovery and creative power, then that should negate the fear. It should. It's hard to, it's hard to do. I know it depends on where you are and what's been happening in your life lately. Sometimes it's easier to say, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go live in my car and drive across country for the month and drive all over the place and see what happens. And sometimes you, you're desperately in need of that and you, you just do it whether you do it as a two week vacation or you literally just drive off and, and get, get away from everyone and everything. And other times that just seems too terrifying and you need home and you need security and familiarity. Mm. I think somewhere in the middle is best, but it depends. I think it's good to experience both extremes as well. I know I've done that. I haven't done it for a while. I guess I'm kind of doing it right now <laughs> with selling the house and leaving my job. Um, so I guess that would be, that would be true, but there's no balloon waiting outside. Alas, <laughs> I wish there were, there isn't however, and I'm assuming that it will be a dream balloon, a figurative balloon that I will be boarding to the next phase of life. How about you? Tell me what comes up for you in the comments. Would love to know. Um, I hope you like these cards. I'm just sort of sorry. I'm a bit mesmerized by them. I'm just staring at them. I wish they were a tiny bit smaller. I think that would be nice, but they are really, really compelling. So we'll be working with these again. Anywho, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and a great week next week and happy writing.